Hi, I'm down in the dumpster room and yes, I have my uh, real camera with me because I found these uh, on the way down before and I posted them on uh, Twitter asking people yay or nay, should I bother getting them. These are uh, Dell Dimension C521s. They're an AMD um, Athlon X2 uh, dual core thing. I think it's a 4400. Um, a past mark of like 15, 1600 or something, it's like meh, like there's nothing really uh, special about these at all. They do actually have some Windows um, XP uh, stickers on them, but like there's no uh, USB 3 on these things. Like pretty much my uh, requirement these days, I hate to say it, but my requirement for taking stuff PCs from the dumpsters, dumpster is it's got to be pretty modern. It's got to have like USB 3 at least and a reasonably uh, modern processor. But this is like eight years old at least, I think. And uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, really a huge what, benefit to uh, taking these. Please let me know if I'm wrong. But uh, if we have a look in there, like there's no RAM. The uh, CD drive is just flapping around in the breeze there, and uh, yeah, you know, it's got some PCI Express slots and stuff like that, but uh, like the little power supplies are nice. I might sort of nab the uh, power supplies out of them because they can always uh, come in handy, especially those little uh, compact ones. So I think they're probably worth worth getting um oh sorry no it's not it's a right angle one i thought it was just that size there but it's actually it's actually right angle but yeah power supplies are always handy so there's two of those so i don't think i'll nab those i've already got enough of these compact form factor uh pcs there's a whole bunch of other <laughs> crap in here look at this and there's also two uh dell monitors which were tossed out at the same time as well but i've already got a metric buttload of monitors and pretty much my requirement for taking monitors these days is that it's got to have a DVI input. This one's only got a um, D15, your old uh, VGA input. So yeah, I don't really want those. There's two of those. There's another one up there. So they presumably came with uh, these machines. But what I might take is this rack mount. UPS. I don't know what uh, brand it is. I haven't uh, touched it or taken it out yet, but let's take this back to the lab and see what's what. The battery's almost certainly dead in it, but uh, we'll have a look. Back to the lab. And here it is. These things weigh a ton. <laughs> They're really super heavy. They're all batteries, uh, of course. And uh, there's your mains input. Got a USB interface. Um, is that looks like some sort of uh, circuit breaker? Um, serial interface. And uh, what's that? I guess some Ethernet uh, monitoring thing. And uh, four uh, mains outlets as well. And let's have a look. It's a HP. Now I don't know if HP actually design and uh, manufacture this themselves or whether or not it's um, some other OEM. I, I presume HP do design and manufacture. Anyway, it's the R1500G3 for those playing along at home. Uh, 1500 watts by the looks of it. Um, yeah, 1500 watts output uh, capable, 1500 VA, 1000 watts output uh, capability. Watts is different to VA. Won't go into that. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it's a pretty decent unit. I seem to believe... It's a pretty decent unit, I'm uh, led to believe. It even comes with a quarter of a million dollars Yankee bucks in uh, load insurance. So if something goes wrong with this and it blows up a quarter of a million bucks worth of, uh, you know, server computers or whatever, then you can sue the ass out of HP or HP's insurance company anyway and get your money back. And it's supposed to have hot swappable batteries, so I presume that they slide out the uh, front. They're probably like huge big ones uh, like uh, long ones like this I don't know it's flipping around now well, it looks like there's only one well there's only one bay anyway open close big ass connector on there not sure what uh, that connector is and just uh, oh load one load two it's got a cut it can do two different loads can it okay spread across the four outputs I guess anyway let's rip the battery out I think how it works is you take out this screw and it looks like you slide 
Alright, slide this across. How does it open, close? A part of the, no, that's part of the other. Oh, there we go. There we go. Alright. That comes out of there like that. And it's got some pull tabs. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's got a whole bunch of littlies. Wow, look at that. What a Bobby Dazzler made in Taiwan. And I don't know, CS3, I don't know. Battery pack assembly replaced with spare. Has it got a date code? So 36 volts total, 9 amp hours, 6 volts, number of batteries, 6. Pack assembly, not sure if there's a not sure if there's a date code. Stickers on the back. They're all high pot tested, power tested. Ooh. Has that got a bulge in it? Is that a protection-y doodad? Hmm. Anyway, let's measure the pack voltage. Oh. 0.6 volts? Yeah, okay. That's pretty cactus. CSB battery company, but it's actually Taiwan uh, Yazoo battery. That's not like Yazoo who makes the uh, uh, transceivers, is it? Anyway, Panas who is it? Is it CSB? Is it Taiwan Yazoo? Or is it Panasonic battery storage? I'm not sure. <laughs> Made by any one of all three. HP.br. Why do all my Brazilian viewers? There are rules. Uh, there's all the wiring, and we can just get the individual batteries out. So if one or uh, all of them fail, you can simply uh, get uh, replacement ones. But, you know, they'd cost a fair bit to get uh, decent quality ones to replace this. So, you know, I think when you sell something like this, the value of it's actually probably in the batteries. All right. Let's lift the lid on this baby. She uh, weighs a heck of a lot less without the batteries, let me tell you. This lid should lift straight off. And warranty void sticker is peeling off, but it's not actually off. There we go, it's Gonski now. Look at that. Come on. Ugh. Firmware version 1.04 for those playing along at home. Pull, Dave. Idiot. All right. Oh, we're in. Wow. That is a one big ass transformer. Check that out. Wow. It, it looks oddball, like it's like wedge-shaped. That is... <laughs> why? I probably... Because we've got the windings coming in from these ends, so there's some extra bulk up there, I guess. Yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Big-ass earth terminal down there, and all of the... Uh, Outputs are wired in parallel, so so much for like isn't it supposed to be dual? Didn't we have dual zone on the front anyway? Maybe that's an additional model or something like that. So just a tiny board down there. They've got some uh, got some snot on there holding the connectors down, but it's all nicely. They've got heat shrink over all of the uh, cables, over all the ribbon cables running through. So that's very nice. Nice attention to detail. It's all cable tied down. Which is excellent. Oh, look at all the big ass relays on there. This would make for a, like, you know, you wouldn't toss this out. There's, you know, lots of stuff you could salvage out of this baby. Don't know what this thing here is. It's like some sort of, uh, like, expansion port, but it's like, it's a logic thing. It's got nothing to do with the power or anything like that. It's got the two ribbon cables going over it, too. There's nothing in there, so, hmm. Got to finger the port. Oh, isn't that board beautiful? Got a whole bunch of nice relays out of there. You can really salvage those. They're handy. Big ass common mode choke down here. Nice. What I notice is if you have a look down here, got a big ass mov. There it is. And inside there, you can see they've got a little thermal fuse attached to that as well. Um, they're using the uh, heat shrink to uh, like better thermally couple those so they're not just start so the thermal fuse is not just flapping around in the breeze so um dual protection there to uh stop the mob from you know exploding they got another one down here as well doing exactly the same thing and uh that looks very nice i don't see any any damage on this thing at all nothing looks blowing 
or anything like that. So I wanted to sort of check that before I uh, powered it up. And uh, everything looks hunky-dory. Look at that output inductor. That is enormous. Wow. And uh, there's a lot of power trannies on those heat sinks. Lots of parallelism. Couple of 40 amp fuses down in there. Have they got two uh, 40 amp fuses? It says 500 VA. This thing's supposed to be, what, 1500 VA, isn't it? The only major cap inside this thing, BC. So that's decent quality. And uh, of course, because you don't need the, you know, don't need any large capacitance inside this thing because it's just um, a charging and discharging a battery, basically. So, yep. And of course, you've got a. Uh, uh, sinusoidal, I, I'm sure this will be like a, a proper uh, pure sinusoid, sin, blah, blah, sinusoidal output. I'm sure, none of that square wave rubbish. And for those playing along at home, that is how you mount a 7805 regulator. None of this flapping around in the breeze rubbish. It's on its own little heat sink. Uh, quite substantial size one, in, and that one's bolted or soldered down to the uh, PCB. Then your TO220 package, just bolted into there with a shake-proof washer. Brilliant. Uh, onboard fuse down in there, that's not easily replaceable. 2 amp, 250 volts, but uh, it looks intact, so... Everything's looking pretty good on this thing, so... Be pretty confident to uh, power it up. It's just the batteries have died on it. And there's only one little teeny tot fan down in there. This thing is supposed to be super duper black magic efficient. So I'll put some specs up if I can. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't need much uh, cooling at all. Oh, there's the backside of the heatsink. There you go. It's got a, ah, oh, look at that. Is, is that like a welded um, a tab, solder tab on the back of that? Oh, that's just so nice. Let's have a look at the trannies down in there. IRF something, Inter International Rectifier, nice. Okay, first of all, power it up with no battery connected. And, ah, oh, doesn't do anything. Maybe it does need a battery. Aww. I do wonder why they actually bolted, uh, they, you know, use a, a termination for the negative connection over here. But the positive one is just soldered directly down to the board down there. Why would you differentiate that? Check this out. I was just going to say, this is a big-ass thermistor here, and look at that. Oopsie. She's broken. That's interesting. Is that why it doesn't work? Like, that would be... I presume that would have been like an output uh, thermistor there from... And the other one here seems to be intact, so... I don't know. It is flapping around in the breeze in there. They didn't bother to... Uh, uh, snot it down or anything like that, which we've done with, uh, you know, a few other uh, components. There's another mov in there and uh, various other whatnots. But, yeah, um, she's come out. Ooh. Okay, so let's power that up again. Press the button. No, had nothing to do with it. It's not hugely surprising given that it's like in the output side of the battery or the input charging side or whatever. Hmm. All right, so let's plug the dead-ass battery back in. But at least, you know, it'll have all sorts of protections and stuff like that. So if it's like, like it shouldn't try and, like if it's dead, it shouldn't try and charge it and all that sort of jazz. So anyway, here we go. Nah. Nah, zippity doo -dah. No, this puppy's dead. No wonder they tossed it. Now, it's not the uh, input uh, fuse, which is a uh, thermal fuse over here. So it's it's not that. I've measured that. That's hunky-dory. And, of course, you measure the mains input, and you get, like, a meg or something like that. So we've got the input over here. Um, it's not going to be the mobs. I checked the uh, fuses for the mobs. They, they haven't activated. So there's been no, like, um, you know, uh, thermal cutout, uh, thermal overload or whatever. And, of course, if you measure the input... There you go, you know, you've got a few megs, something like that. So, it's all connected, like, on the other side and everything. So, there's something, like, you know, downstream, and you measure that at the mains input, of course. So, there's something, like, downstream 
of that, you know, they've got the relay switch in here to switch like the mains directly from the input um, straight through to the output over here. So when it's not in battery operation, and then of course they'd have some other big ass relays in here to then switch the output of the inverter coming from here over and the mains. But yeah, I'm sorry, but this is not going to be a, a big troubleshooting video. I found one issue there. Oh, by the way, I soldered that back in. And uh, yeah, so... There you go, for those curious to know what those uh, thermistors down there are, like, no, you know, in the order of uh, 1.9 ohms, I'm sure that'll be the same for both of them. Oh, the other one's 2.4. And measuring the output of that 5 volt regulator in there, zippity doodah, so, yep. No, there's no logic, which isn't surprising because then you'd expect the LEDs to power up and it to go beep beep and whatnot. Just to show you that we are getting, uh, well, in this case, closer to 250 volts here in the lab. It's pretty much on the high side, even though we're supposed to have 230 volts nominal um, here in Australia now. It was 240, the lower to 230, but anyway, lots of areas. Uh, but yeah, I'm close to 250 there, and we are getting that across that uh, input uh, choke down there. So it is actually getting onto the board. And the primary of this uh, transformer here, which looks like it's here, I'm getting uh, 9.2 ohms, so that's intact. It's not like it's blowing, and of course there's no visual signs, but, you know, there could have been like an internal thermal fuse or something, but the primary's there. Okay, now this is interesting. It's not your traditional uh, transformer. We've got basically three wires coming in, uh, well, uh, three wires here going off to our board, uh, we've got, I measured across here, we've got uh, nine, nine and a half ohms or thereabouts, and there's one coming back, so they, those two go into the, uh, this side here, let's just call that the primary side, even though it's not really going to be a secondary, and then got some additional, one, two additional windings that go over to this side, and then one wire that comes back out to here. And that's it. So there's about 9 ohms across there and about 0.3 ohms from there over to this other wire here. So it's not isolated in any way. So it seems like that is an auto transformer there, which is a non-isolated uh, common input and output uh, transformer rather than your traditional, you know, isolated uh, primary and secondary wires. So... Yeah, well, auto transformer, but once again, that seems intact. So, yeah, it's got to be something on the board, I think. So there really is uh, nothing obvious there. And yes, that uh, I did actually measure, not just uh, visually inspected that uh, fuse on the other side. And that's fine. So, yeah, we're getting 240 volts onto the board, but nothing else. So, Where's Wally? Where's the problem? Sorry, but this is not going to be a troubleshooting video, so I'm not going to uh, go through the rest of this because I don't have the time to do it right now. So this is just a dumpster dive and teardown video, but there's no other signs of visual issues. I found that just by wiggling that around, that was almost, that was like not visually, you know, I didn't see that visually. I was just like giving it a little wiggle, 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 yeah. And uh, found that uh, thermistor broken, but yeah, um, everything else looks visually okay. So no problems whatsoever. I've measured a few other thermistors in there, you know, that one down there and other stuff measured those and everything's hunky-dory so yeah not sure what the deal is but wouldn't be a bad troubleshooting one this one maybe for another day catch you next time